Hey guys, it's Will from Justin. And it's Norm from Tested. Norm, laptops. Uh, I have two laptops in front of me, but today we're only reviewing one of them. Um, I've already reviewed the uh, Apple MacBook Air 11 inch. It has well. Has you liked well. it, the battery's really good. Yep. Done. Done. But I have it here because it is probably in the same class as what I think is my favorite PC Ultrabook. Now you haven't, form factor. you haven't tested that many PC Ultrabooks. I haven't PC used like, all the Sonys or all the Dells, right. but of ones I've used, uh, I like this one the most, and it is the Lenovo Yoga 11 inch. S. And it has a, a pretty unique feature uh, in that it supports the Windows 8 touchscreen stuff in, in a couple of really interesting ways. Yeah, so uh, this is in the Lenovo's IdeaPad series. Lenovo, uh, they of course make the ThinkPads when, yeah. back when they were IBM. So those are the, the awesome matte black yeah. new chiclet keyboards. They usually have a little pencil nub eraser if, pointer in there somewhere. If you go on any cross-country flight and you yeah. look down the aisles, half the people are using you know tablets mm -hmm. and half the people are business dudes on Excel using ThinkPads. Yeah. Or in business school, you know, uh, very popular, but they also have consumer lines, and that's what this is. It's the IdeaPad line. Okay. Uh, last year, when we went to CES, we mm -hmm. saw the Yoga 13, and I reviewed that last year as well. It was a 13-inch version of this laptop. So it's an Ivy Bridge laptop. It's 13 inches. Mm -hmm. it's, it was part of the first wave of Ultrabooks. Uh, or second maybe wave of Ultrabooks, yeah, yep. Yeah, I can't uh, remember. But definitely within the Ultrabook class with okay. touchscreen. Uh, but this is the 11-inch version, also running Windows 8 Pro. So why is it special, Norm? It's Show special me. because, uh, well, it's special in the Yoga series because it's the 11S having an x86 processor, not okay. an ARM processor, running full Windows. We didn't like the ARM-based 11-inch Yoga no. that you tested. It was bad. It was just ARM. You can only use Windows RT. To be avoided. Yeah. Uh, but also the Yoga series, if you haven't heard of it, uh, unlike the MacBook, which the screen, if you could tell, only bends to certain... It, this, hinge. This it locks was in. our friend Gordon's big complaint about yeah. Mac Max like, is that the it. hinge stops. If, if, if you yeah. try bending it too far, it will break this laptop. Bad things. Uh, this one will, as a laptop, fold up and then go all the way around. Well, so Lenovo's usually, ThinkPads usually had hinges that would go all the way back flat. Flat back. But, yeah. but yeah. this, this flipping like this. all the way around and turning into a tablet essentially is new. Or, or new for Lenovo. Yeah, and you know, I don't think it turns into a tablet. I would never call this a tablet. You wouldn't use that for your Windows 8.1 tableting needs? Yeah, you can. There's, there's Windows 8 right here. Windows okay. 8, you your start yeah, screen. Look, look at all those Metro apps. But I would call this uh, t tablet-esque, but I would not call this a tablet. So you're not going to replace an iPad or something not like that? Not going to replace this. anything that I would consider a tablet, okay. whether it's iPad, iPad mini, Nexus 7, or even the Nexus 10. Okay, so it's called the Yoga because there's a bunch of different poses. Yeah, this, this is, is a, the traditional laptop right. pose. So right now, it's in your standard I'm typing on a laptop. You're, you're a normal businessman. I'm a normal person. Uh, there are t three additional poses. Of course, we mentioned the, they call it the tablet pose. Yep. So you can hold it. How, is, how much does it weigh? Like when it's in, I mean, it weighs the same thing because you're just folding it over. You're not detaching three the screen. Three pounds is pretty three heavy for a tablet. Is heavy, that's why I wouldn't call it a tablet. Yeah, okay. A tablet probably has to be under, under a pound if it's this big. But it's in the same kind of weight range as say a Surface Pro or your no, Surface Pro is still so much lighter. Two, like two pounds? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, three pounds is way too heavy. Okay. Uh, the keys do turn off okay. when it's in this position, so it doesn't matter. Uh, also, one thing to note, when you're using this and you put this on the table, mm -hmm. uh, the keys, they are a little recessed in the tray here. Oh, so it's flat under so the... So none of the keys are actually pressed uh, hmm. if you're on a table. Of course, if this was like had coffee stains and yeah. or, or was a big puddle here, you wouldn't want to put your, your Probably a bad idea. laptop here because then that would stick to the bottom of the key. Gotcha. So this is the second pose, we'll call it, we'll use our marketing language. Yeah. Uh, the third pose, which I never really like, they call it the tent pose. That seems unwieldy and scary. And so you see it automatically flipped uh, the screen. Uh, this, I think, is for PowerPoint presentations. So if you want to put this at the head of a table, mm. and then you could you know, swipe through I your presentations. I can kind of see that, but like... It's also for like if you're looking for recipes and you know, you're in a uh, Metro app and you want to you know have this on your kitchen counter and look up your recipes or anything else. That, that. Did you ever actually use this though? Nope, not never okay, like this. Move on. Then. Never, never like that. Never found myself wanting to put it in this tent pose. Uh, what I did use it in is this fourth pose, and so this, this is stand keys stand down, position. Folded up. Keys down, folded, pop kind of up. Yeah. Um, which is kind of serves the same purpose as you know, putting it in your kitchen counter. You can have the screen here. You can still touch the screen. You can hit the pop-up keyboard. So mm -hmm. the pop-up keyboard will pop up in the bottom. I think you never want to type like this because this is not a rigid it's hinge. It's wobbly, yeah. It's, it's a little wobbly. Like, it's firm enough for browsing. 
No this problem. is for consuming, not for creating, right? This but is, not, you're never going to be typing documents like this. This is you're on the airplane and you want to either read something or a, you want to watch a movie? A perfect airplane viewing position, yeah. a perfect movie viewing position, media consumption. Uh, and when I'm on the couch, for example, on my, on my living room couch and I'm okay. watching the TV and this is my second screen, I actually pop my legs up and put it right here like that. Wow. That is a very, that looks and, really uncomfortable. And you know what? I, you can't do that with a tablet. That's true. You can't do that with a tablet. But I can totally do it here. My feet are on the, the coffee table. Yeah, stretched out. And I'm just browsing look, the internet and look, looking up, watching TV, browsing the internet. So you're doing two things half as well. Two, two things excellently. Um, uh, this is why I, I like the yoga. I mean, the versatility offered by these poses isn't something that you have to use. Like, mm -hmm. never really use like this. Right. You're primarily using it. Like that. It's a, it, the benefit, the reason you get this is because you want a real laptop that also is tablet-ish. Yeah, tablet-ish. Yeah. You have some of those benefits. Um, okay, so it's orange. It comes in a bunch of different colors, Yeah, there's right? gray, there's a gray. Uh, this is the orange color. Um, it's very pretty. Which I, I really like. This is, it's all plastic. It looks metallic on the outside, though. Uh, it's a matte orange. Um, like even this Lenovo, it's it's all plastic, okay. uh, but it has, hasn't scuffed up really. Uh, what I also like is the finish in here. I mean, it's, it's a using... really, really nice, like nice built laptop. You're a couple of months into this, so the reason I mean the reason you buy Lenovo's is that they they have a pretty good reputation for being sturdy. Um, yeah, this is, you're, you're what two months into using this? Two months thereabout? into using this, uh, this has like a faux uh, rubberized plastic finish, so it's it's actually really nice. Ooh. You can actually it's a little pushy. Get, a little bit. It's, it's a perfect, little bit. perfect for for your palms, okay. for your wrists. Uh, the keyboard here is an IdeaPad keyboard, so it's not going to be as good as, for example. Oh, so this? it's not the new long throw chiclet keyboard that they use no, on ThinkPad. This is a ThinkPad keyboard from the Helix, and I love this keyboard. This you can type on forever. Yeah. Uh, this is great to type on because it, it is recessed a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, not as comfortable to use as what's going to say. And no nub. The MacBook keyboard. No pointer nub if you like that. But no how's red the nub. trackpad? Has a good trackpad, Snaptics trackpad. I think it's totally fine. It's not the best trackpad. Like multi finger in the world. gestures and all that does stuff. Does all your multi finger gesture, does your Windows gesture, swipe in from the left. Okay. Can, can you do two charms. finger scroll and you that can kind do, of thing? Absolutely can do your two finger scroll. Okay. Scroll. It is everything you'd want from Synaptics uh, on a trackpad. Uh, let's talk about some ports really quickly. Uh, there's a USB 3 port, blue, only one USB 3 port on the side. Okay. Headphone jack, full size HDMI, your volume rockers are here. Full size HDMI is nice, but I, I mean, how often do you plug your laptop into the TV? Uh, you plug it into a computer monitor. I guess that's true. And, and you okay. HDMI to DVI. Uh, USB 2 on this side, so that's one of the places where they hmm. couldn't, because of the chipset only supports one full USB 3. That's a bummer. Uh, that's USB 2. Full size SD card slot, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. The SD card actually goes all the way in, so I have left my SD card in here a couple times. Uh, by design, for example, on the MacBook 13 inch laptop, some yeah. of the SD card slots, it protrudes out so you know to take it, it out. It dangles, yeah. But here you can just leave it in if you want to use it as some additional storage. Power is proprietary, uh, proprietary, proprietary power connector, and this button here is a screen lock, so if you don't want to have it switch to a vertical orientation. So it's orientation lock. Yeah, it's orientation lock. Um, I will mention that the volume rockers are a little weird. If you look in the screen right now, um, you see my volume rocker. It's actually going down when I press the up volume rocker. So here's going down, but if I go the lower one, so the volume actually goes up. It's reversed. So, so does pressing it change? The higher one up, it doesn't change. Oh, so it's always the same way. Always the same, and the reason it's reversed is because if you flip it then into this mode, but then the now when you press the volume rocker, the higher one up goes up, hmm. and the lower one up goes down. I you guess would think there's some sense. software fix to to fix this, but they have this was a, something I th thought was a little little irksome in the Yoga 13, and it is still here in the 11s. So uh, how do you is the start button on the front? Is that a button? This on the is front? a button. Okay, so yep. you can you can wake it up with that if it's sleeping, um, and then there's also a normal power button someplace else, I assume. Power button is in the front. And I don't like the placement for it. It is also a little recessed here right next to an LED indicator uh, to press it right there. Hmm. It's yeah. weird. So, so I mean, they're trying to make the best of both worlds with a laptop-tablet hybrid. How often do you find yourself using the touchscreen stuff when you're in laptop mode? Abs a lot. 
Really? So it's the reason I'm, I have Windows uh, IE Internet Explorer here mm -hmm. uh, because Chrome does not have great support for touchscreen for multi multi uh, touch. Did Chrome does do two you can finger scroll, scroll and stuff like that, but you can't pinch to zoom. You and can't you do can't any pinch tap, to double tap to zoom. And, and even like the that. scrolling, I think, is less responsive in Chrome in the Chrome mm -hmm. renderer than it is in Internet Explorer. For example, right here, I'm just on tested right now, and this is Internet Explorer. It's very fast, very smooth, and of course, you can pinch in if mm -hmm. I'm in an image, for example. Pick in details. I do this all the time in photos. And you're in the desktop version or the and Metro this version? This is desktop version. Okay. Um, but in Chrome, uh, and this is just tested again. Ooh. You see how there's a little it's bit a little of that chunky. lag. Yeah. And it's not just tested. For example, even a site like Google. Still not great. Yeah, and doesn't do any of that. It's it's definitely. I mean, it's not. Way. IE10 seems to be pretty smart about how it handles touch. I'm still a very Windows firm 8. believer in touch on Windows desktop. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is something that it's not be my primary interface, but when I'm reading, if I have like a beverage in hand or something, or if I'm doing something else, I can always touch the screen. It is just an so additional. So they're having a cocktail browsing the web. Just an additional input option. Okay. Perfect. Different modalities for input. Um, so, so let's talk about what's inside. Yeah, this is, it's, it's Haswell, right? That's brand new, all the laptops have it? Nope. Oh. Uh, this laptop, while it was released in July, does not have a Haswell chip inside. Okay, so what, what does that mean in terms of like performance and battery life? Because those are the two things you care about on a laptop. So it is a ULV ultra low voltage uh, Intel's Ivy Bridge. Okay, so last uh, year's CPU. Not last year's CPU. Oh, okay. It actually was released uh, first quarter of this year, the ultra low voltage version. And that's why okay. this laptop was delayed for so long. Hmm. Uh, last year there was Ivy Bridge that was in the, the MacBooks. Um, but at CES, Intel announced lower voltage, lower watt, more power efficient Ivy Bridge uh, CPUs. Uh, they're a little cheaper for OEMs to buy, okay. and that's actually what's in here. So, so, so you get like 10 hours of battery just like Haswell? You don't get 10 hours of battery. Oh. You get about five and a half hours at most of battery. Most of my use is about five hours. And was the that, Lenovo claims six, okay. it's closer to five. And what was, was that like watching videos? And that's web browsing. Web, web streaming takes it down to three if you're okay. streaming nonstop and, and syncing with Dropbox. Uh, and if you're doing something intensive, processor intensive, uh, for example, Photoshop or Lightroom, right. you're going to get like two and a half hours of battery. Okay. Um, but it is uh, Ivy Bridge, so it has Intel HD 4000 4, graphics. Mm -hmm. uh, you can play games like The Walking Dead, okay. uh, which I'll load up as we talk about uh, this chipset uh, just a little bit. Did you, did you try any kind of less, I mean, not that Walking Dead is a casual game. Walking Dead, I mean, all casual, if it's a 2D, not 3D casual game, it'll right. run fine. Okay. Your Peggles and your, your Bejeweled and your Plants for Zombies will run fine, but your Walking Dead, which is 3D, mm -hmm. uh, if you turn down the graphics all the way down, you'll get about 30 to 45 frames per second when, uh, when you're plugged in. And then you should be able to play stuff like Torchlight and... Yeah, Torchlight, kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like your, your basic, yes. your basic, I can play this on a laptop games. FTL, Torchlight, all that kind of stuff. F FTL is yeah. all, all 2D graphics. Um, the processor in here is, I don't have it plugged in right now, mm -hmm. it turbos to two gigahertz. Okay. So the Intel chips right now, uh, whether it's Ivy Bridge or Sandy Bridge, they have a, st a stock clock. Mm -hmm. And then if you're using processor intensive tasks, it will clock up. So for example, on and, the MacBook Air. And that Air, clocks up both cores or just one core? It, both cores okay. and also the graphics clock up. Um, so for the, the MacBook Air, I think it's running at like 1.3 gigahertz, but it clocks up all the way to 2.6 gigahertz because mm -hmm. this is a full, uh, it's a full 3317, a 3317U processor. Um, here, because it's the Intel's Y class processor, the ULV processor, mm -hmm. it only clocks up to 2 gigahertz. Mm. And uh, when it's not plugged in, you'll see the frame rates are actually quite low because it doesn't hit that 2 gigahertz. Right. Uh, wattage wise, this is a, uh, at idle. It's about seven watts when you're not when you're just doing like regular tasks, mm -hmm. um, but when you're uh, when you're doing something uh, more intensive and when you're plugged in, it will go up to 13 watts, which is actually still lower power than Haswell's 15 watts okay. and last year's Ivy Bridge's 17 watts. Okay. So um, if you care about those specs, basically this is more power efficient than last year's Ivy Bridge, full Ivy Bridge, uh, less power efficient at full load than Haswell. Right. And but a little right bit now, faster than has well than Ivy Bridge would have been as well. Yeah, and you see right now in, uh, in Fraps uh, playing Walking Dead, just this cutscene, you're getting about 45 frames per second. This is all graphics turned down, all the way down. Um, Looks like a picture frame right now. Yeah, well, I got to cut through the cutscenes, uh, but basically playable with graphics turned all the way down. And did you try playing real games, StarCraft, TF2, that kind of no stuff? No, StarCraft. StarCraft is not playable on this. Okay. Uh, TF2 is 
kind of playable. Have you, have you tried anything that uses the touchscreen that's a game? Like, I'm just curious to no, see. No, not really. I okay. mean, the, the touchscreen acts as a mouse. Mm -hmm. So unless it's a Windows RT game that's made for touchscreen, if it's like a, a traditional keyboard mouse game, that's not going to work with a mouse, with the okay. touchscreen. I mean, you can like technically hit it, but you're not going to be actually playing with, uh, with the touchscreen as opposed to the keyboard mouse. Um, this model has 8 gigs of RAM inside. Uh, with Ivory Bridge, it's only one DIMM slot, so you can buy a 4 gig version or the 8 gig version. So there's you no multi-channel memory you, or anything nope, like that? You can't oh, buy, weird. you can't put two 4 gigs in there. Uh, you can pop this open if you have torque screws, so the feet, the feet uh, pop out, and if you unscrew everything, you and can actually uh, replace the, the RAM. I haven't done it myself, but this is what other users have done. And the feet are replaceable, they're not glued on or anything? They're, you kind of have to like destroy them to, to oh, pry sucks. them off. Uh, but you can replace the hard drive if you want, okay. uh, which is a solid stage drive, uh, and also the RAM if you really want. I'd say just pay for what you're gonna, what you're gonna on need. On laptops, it's general like it's generally not worth opening them up unless you break something and you're out of warranty. Yeah, I mean some people, I mean if they really want to buy a real high capacity, like a mm -hmm. five twelve gig, uh, the difference, the price difference on uh, on Lenovo's website between a one twenty eight gig SSD, mm -hmm. a Samsung SSD, and a two hundred fifty six gig, which is fifty bucks, okay. which I thought was really cheap. Is it a SATA SSD or is it PCI Express? It's a SATA SSD. Okay. So it doesn't have in in. Photoshop benchmarks, it actually ran much slower than the new MacBook Air because this is just MSATA 2, right. uh, which does hit, hit its cap. Um, the Yoga 13, if you remember, a lot of people complained that the, uh, the distribution and storage was really uneven. There was a lot of storage reserved for Lenovo's backup. Here, only 4 gigs is, which okay. I think is fine. Keep that 4 gigs um, with 102 gigs on a, off of 128 gig SSD available for use. I think it's Good for all your Windows stuff, good for your applications, and then plug in USB 3.0 if you want media. Do they provide a like a USB thumb drive or something like no that? No USB to, thumb drive. But you can, I assume, create one using their yeah. if you wanted using to, software to on the machine. If you rip off the, uh, the backup and claim that 4 gigs, you, you can. can do that. Okay, yes. great. Um, so how, how does it stack up to your to your Air? Uh, if you come Because they're, they're both 11-inch laptops. They are, and they both have the same resolution screens. So and they're both is, around the same price, right? The Air, I think, well, they both started at $1,000, right. and the Lenovo, if you want to compare spec for spec, the Air is much more expensive. Okay. If you're going to want get 128 gigs or 256 gigs on this uh, and 8 gigs of RAM, it's going to be 1300 bucks. Here, it's going to be 1050 Gotcha. Um, if you can see, they're both 11-inch, and they're both 1366 by 768. The screen is actually, I think, better on the Yoga mm -hmm. in terms of uh, what's uh, color uh, reproduction in contrast, uh, but it's much brighter on this MacBook Air. This is at max brightness right now. Wow, really? And I can show you max brightness. Uh, the MacBook Air right now, I don't know if you can really see, it's actually at only 50% brightness, and that's max brightness on the MacBook Air, which is a little blown out on the screen because of the camera, mm -hmm. but you can already see that the max brightness is, can't, they, they can't really compare. Um, and then the MacBook just turned off right now. Uh, but in terms of uh, the size, the MacBook Air is still it's a little bit smaller. The footprint is smaller. It's about the same thickness, though, if you look at the thick part. You know what? If you look at the thick part, the MacBook Air is still a little thinner. But of course, it's also beveled, and yeah. this is consistent across the entire laptop. So you're going to feel it more. I mean, three pounds, under three pounds, uh, in your bag, it's not going to matter. The, it's still a small laptop. The micro SD slot is a huge, huge full win. Full SD slot. Yeah, I, sorry, full SD slot is a huge win for the Yoga. It's something that's sorely lacking from a lot of 11-inch Ultrabooks and, and the MacBook Air 11-inch. Um, I mean, it seems like you quite like this laptop, Norm. I do like this laptop. Uh, I think that it can be improved. Uh, they it's unfortunate it's not Haswell. Uh, it, only in the sense that I think it, either Lenovo or Windows 8 misutilizes the battery. This is actually a pretty big battery in here. It's 42 mm -hmm. watt hours. The MacBook Air, I think, is 38. So you're talking about a bigger capacity battery already. Mm -hmm. It's something that runs at 13 watts mm -hmm. as opposed to 15 or 17 watts uh, and 7 watts idle, and yet the battery life isn't where I want it to be. Well, it's the difference between turning off the parts of the CPU that are unused versus not turning off the parts of the CPU yeah, that are unused. Yeah, this isn't something that you could just leave in sleep mode all day or all, all week and then not have to plug back you in. You can't treat it like it's an iPad or an Android tablet no. or something like that. You're it's, gonna have, it's you're gonna have to. You're going to have to nurture the battery and you know, plug it in every every couple days. Are they going to update this with Haswell as, as that's available? or? I presume that if you're a PC OEM right now mm -hmm. and you are making laptops, there's no reason that you're, you're not going to have Haswell in your entire line. Um, there will be a, a ULV version of Haswell later on. Uh, the MacBooks and the other PC uh, laptops run the full mobile Haswell. I would say uh, we don't know. We don't okay. know when. I mean, this came out almost a year after the 11-inch Ivy Bridge MacBook Air. Different processor, technically, yeah. uh, but 
people want the latest and greatest. Uh, does this work with a stylus? Uh, not work with a stylus. Doesn't have a stylus. Does oh, not a have a stylus. So the Helix Novo Yoga Helix mm -hmm. has a stylus. This is finger t ten point touch only. Um, and if you really want a stylus, you have to go with the Helix or the Surface. And Pro. then how would you compare this to like the Surface? Like the because the Surface Pro is the other competitor that's that's interesting here. It's a touch. Pure, it's mainly a touchscreen device. You can also add kind of a bad keyboard and trackpad too. Right. And the Surface actually Microsoft cut the price a hundred bucks recently. Mm -hmm. They haven't sold many of them on the Surface Pros even. And that is a 1920 by 1080 screen. Mm -hmm. uh, this is 1366 by 768. I actually think the screen on this is fine. I think the that resolution, the resolution or? is fine. Okay. I think it could be brighter. I think you, I'd rather have good color reproduction. And it is an IPS panel, not a TN panel like on the, on the MacBooks. I think you don't need a 1920 by 1080 p resolution screen on anything smaller than 13 inches. Well, the benefit is that if you're, if you're say, an artist, if you're drawing stuff on the Surface Pro, then you, the extra resolution can kind of help. It can help, but in Windows, the UI stuff just doesn't scale well. Even if you're going to increase this UP, uh, the DPI scaling to 125%, which mm -hmm. is a lot of people like, or 150%, your legacy apps, a lot of the UI stuff. I run it 100% on here, and I, I, I love it. And I don't feel like I'm, I'm crunched for real estate. Uh, even when I'm doing something like photo editing, I can pop up Lightroom and I can just remove some of the UI elements. And uh, this is, it's big enough. It's workable. It's totally workable. And yeah. I'll load up Lightroom right now, I'll give that final demo. Um, 11, 11 inches, totally usable. Uh, you can still plug this in with HDMI to a 24 inch mm -hmm. monitor, 30 inch monitor, and it, and it will run fine just like, you know, just like other laptops. So, how much does it cost? A thousand dollars is this spec. Okay, so eight, that's eight gigs of memory. Eight gigs of memory and the uh, the two fifty six gig hard drive. One twenty eight. One twenty eight gig. One twenty eight gig SSD. Um, and like here, I can show you in Lightroom. I just basically have my develop panel and recede all the the sidebars, mm -hmm. and this image is totally workable. Um, if I pop in all the sidebars, of course then it's going to be much smaller. And when you plug it into a real monitor, then it behaves like a real computer, yeah. and you have high resolution in the whole whole deal, right? Absolutely. Um, so that's the Leno no Lenovo Yoga 11S. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the Intel version. Stay away from the RT version. Yeah. D don't go shopping and find the cheaper Yoga 11. Right. If you're going to look for a Yoga uh, and you want the small one, it's the 11S. Um, I, would, I like this more than the Yoga 13. Mm -hmm. uh, Yoga 13 is already eight months old now, so... Uh, hopefully that might get refreshed to Haswell sometime soon, in the next two months or so. Do you so. feel like this is worth, is it safe to buy this now, or should people wait for an updated Haswell version sometime in the next like, I think it's safe six to buy or eight this months? Okay. Absolutely safe to buy Good this enough. Now. Yes, absolutely. Well, that's the Lenovo Lobo IdeaPad 11S. Uh, we'll be back with more from Tested.com soon. I'm Will. I'm Norm. Bye.